to everyone. Uh, I hope you had the chance to take a cup of coffee, tea or something. Uh, we have a long day with a lot of lectures. So let's start with uh, Cayenne with QCD phenomenology and scattering down to the second lecture. Please, Kai, go ahead. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, I hope everybody uh, enjoyed the yesterday's uh, uh, lectures and exercises. Uh, so today I will be talking about this Anipus 4 super young meals. Uh, as I said in yesterday's lecture, uh, in this special theory, we have enhanced the symmetries, which allows us to solve for the tree level scattering amplitude um, exactly. Um, by means of the solving solving the BCFW uh, super BCFW recursion relations, and so today I will give a brief um, introduction of this theory and explain how this procedure is done, and we were focusing on studying and understanding the singularity structures of the tree level super amplitudes. So here are a couple of uh, references that are relevant for the content today. Um, so let's get started. Um, the in the Nichols four super super young mu theory, we have like um, we we have the N equals four supersymmetry, which imposes a symmetry uh, among the um, um, bosonic and the fermionic fields. So these kind of symmetries is uh, generated by the, the pair of Grassmann odd super translation operators, which satisfy these um, like this. Um, um, the uh, SUSY algebra and the closure of the SUSY algebra. Sorry. I'm not sure what happened. It says it's installing. It. Um, how do I make it bigger? Oh, sorry about that. Um, so the closure of the N equals four Susie algebra determines the angel degree of freedoms. Uh, they need to be eight bosonic and uh, eight, eight fermionic uh, degree of angel freedoms. And uh, this includes an um, plus minus helicity gluons and the six scalars uh, whose in the SU4 indices are anti-symmetric and uh, um, eight fermions, which are the gluinos, uh, including the chiral and antichiral fermions. So we can assemble this uh, angel field contents into a angel supermultiplet uh, phi, um, which are defined on the super uh, angel superspace parametrized by lambda, lambda tilde, and the Grassmann variable eta. So we introduce this Grassmann odd uh, variables, and there are two copies of them carrying the indices of the SU4 uh, gauge group. And um, then we can uh, uh, write the, um, to expand this angel superfield phi uh, in, in different powers of these eta variables, it truncates at uh, order eta to the fourth. And these the components correspond to uh, the, um, the angel uh, field compound that I just described. So um, the SUSY generators in the angel superspace take the following form. And it uh, has a uh, the the Q the Q generator is like it is like a, a translation operator which acts multiplicative multiplicatively on the angular fields, and the Q bar generator is a first order differential operator. So and um, acting on these angular superfields, um, e he can uh, the, the field transforms in this simple way, and by read we can read off the transformation properties of these uh, component fields uh, by comparing the uh, left hand side with the right hand side. 
So you can see this SUSI um, transformation uh, uh, operator uh, will um, generate the sim symmetries among the bosonic and the fermionic degree of freedoms in the theory. Uh, so in n equals four super, super young mill theory, we compute the scattering amplitude as a transition probability uh, between these onshore superfields. And here we define these helicity operators, HI, uh, where we assign these uh, eta variables with uh, positive one half helicity. Um, therefore, all these phi uh, super multiplet phi has uniform helicity plus one, uh, and they, um, they, they, therefore the uh, scattering amplitude must satisfy this equation. There are the eigenstates of the helicity operators. Um, so. Um, the, uh, due to the uh, SUSI, um, the translation invariance, uh, as well as the super translation invariance, the amplitude must be proportional to a momentum conservation delta function, as well as a super momentum conservation delta function, where Q is lambda uh, alpha eta. Um, so it takes this general form. Um, so our convention is that we pull out a Park Taylor uh, factor in front and, uh, uh, and write the amplitude as this factor times a function Pn, which define, depends on the lambda, lambda tilde and the eta variables. Um, so what does this Pn look like? Um, so bear in mind that we have a, we should have an SU4 gauge uh, symmetry, which are called R symmetry, uh, given by these uh, generator uh, SU4 uh, rotation generators, and uh, these these R symmetries requires that the uh, function p in function p the eta variables must appear as uh, eta to the fourth to raised to some power, where the eta to the fourth is just like a contracted um, version where you put two, four um, copies of eta. Recording in progress. Sorry, sorry. Um, okay. Is there it, was just, um, it was just a mic that went oh, on. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Um, so therefore the eta uh, expansion of this PN function takes the following form. Uh, due, due to the fact that the eta variable are Grassmann, var Grassmann odd variables, the expansion truncates at finite order. And uh, the each term in the expansion you know, has a one-to-one -one correspondence with a uh, specific uh, helicity uh, helicity configuration, uh, just because of the, the the way that we construct the helicity operator here, um, and the lowest or component in the eta variables correspond to the MHV amplitude, and the highest component correspond to MHV bar amplitudes. Um, so. Uh, in order to, to, to study these amplitudes in more detail, we need to get a bit of familiar with uh, these Grassmann variables um, and how to do algebra, algebras with these variables. So um, uh, first of all, <clears throat> the, uh, the doing a, uh, uh, a, the integration, which is back to a Grassmann odd variable theta, is equivalent to taking the derivative. So if you want to extract uh, the, um, let's say f plus theta f1, you want to extract this uh, component um, of order theta of this function, uh, you can take derivative with respect to the theta, or you can just do a integration of the theta variables. And uh, in this sense, the delta function, um, theta, delta theta minus theta zero uh, is equivalent to a term that is linear in theta uh, because when you integrate over this delta function against, against some uh, test function, you get the same result as if you integrate of this function times theta minus theta zero. <clears throat> And um, once you get familiar with, with these uh, notations and conventions, uh, you can write down this eight dimensional super translation, uh, super momentum conservation delta function. 
and uh, you can expand them uh, since delta function is equivalent to a linear term, you can expand these terms. And then um, uh, you can see that it is proportional to the eta to the a. So it has eight powers of the Grassmann uh, variables. Um, so, um, and also uh, if you do an integration over the square uh, uh, of the Anshul state squared, that means you are summing over all the Anshul superstates. Um, so, let me, uh, so, so you can replace this sum over superstates with the integral over the eta variables. <clears throat> um, because this the momentum conservation delta function starts at order eta to the a's, that means our amplitude start at order eta to the a's. Um, there's uh, the um, to, therefore, in the expansion of the amplitude, and um, the eta to the zero and eta to the fourth terms all vanish, and that just leads to the conclusion that um, the uh, if we have all helicity gluon scattering, then the amplitude vanish, or if we only have one positive and other uh, and other, the rest of minus helicity gluon scattering, the amplitude also vanish. <clears throat> which is consistent with, with what we uh, uh, concluded yesterday. Um, so the simplest uh, uh, super amplitude, an uh, example of the super amplitude is the three point MHV amplitude, <clears throat> uh, which takes the following form. And it is it has the manifest the cyclic symmetry with respect to the external legs. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> And the MHV bar amplitude uh, is obtained by uh, doing a conjugation for the MHV amplitude and then carry out the Fourier transform with respect to the eta bar variables. Uh, you can do this exercise as a, as a, a homework for today um, and try to understand how you do carry out the Grassmann uh, integrals uh, over the delta functions. Um, so why do we need to do a Fourier transform? And the reason is that the Anshul superspace is chiral. It does not contain the variable eta bar, only the eta variables. So when you conjugate, do a conjugation for the external Anshul state, uh, you, you also conjugate these eta variables into eta bar. Therefore, we need to transform back into these uh, eta variables uh, so that you're back uh, into the Anshul superspace. Um, and now we are ready to proceed with the super BCFW recursion relations, which help us to compute the higher point uh, super amplitude from the lower point amplitude. So the idea was very similar to what we talked about yesterday. Uh, we want to study the behavior of the amplitude under a complex shift of the super momentum. <clears throat> which preserves the uh, momentum conservation and super momentum conservation. So we can do the shift <clears throat> and neighboring legs one and n um, in the following way, where we uh, perform a complex shift um, parameterized by a complex variable uh, z um, on the chiral and anti-chiral spinners, as well as on one of the eta variables at leg n. Um, so that you can check that the momentum conservation is satis still satisfied. And uh, the BCFW recursion uh, relations is the statement that the super amplitude factorized onto product of lower point super amplitude uh, summed over the onshore super states, meaning that when we, we integrate over the uh, intermediate uh, of the eta variables associated with the intermediate state. So we can uh, decompose this general BCFW recursion formula into contributions uh, from different Grassmann degrees. Um, so for example, we would like to study the n to the p um, MHV amplitude. Uh, we just extract the order eta to the 4p minus 8 component of this full super amplitude. So on the right-hand side, 
We also need to uh, count the degree of eta variables such that the total degree matches with this number. And so these are the only choices that you can uh, the, write down uh, the, 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 um, the only configurations that you can assign for the left and right sub amplitudes. So then uh, we can represent these sums as the, um, by these diagrams. So here, these A terms is what we call a homogeneous terms. It comes with a NHV bar, a super amplitude times an N minus one point and um, to the piece order uh, and, and, and to the piece MHV amplitude. And the B term is the so-called inhomogeneous terms, which are products of, um, uh, of lower point amplitudes. Um, so the building blocks for solving the super PCFW recursions are these the simplest uh, in the, the examples of the amplitude, which are the MHV n point amplitude and the and, and three point MHV bar amplitude. So this I have already talked about, and and this uh, is the generalization of the three point MHV case to the n point. Uh, you can do a very similar exercise by. Uh, uh, by solving the uh, these BCFW recursion relations for the MHV amplitudes, and this is another exercise for today, and uh, you can it is very easy. Then you can prove that uh, in general it takes these following, uh, it takes these Park Taylor forms. So given these two uh, basic building blocks, uh, I would like to explain how to solve uh, for the un MHV super amplitude. Um, by uh, by computing these on um, the uh, the right hand side of the BCFW recursion relations, so for the NMHV amplitudes, uh, we have this A for A term and B term simultaneously, and we would like to deal with this B terms or the inhomogeneous term first. So uh, it is it just factorized onto the product of two MHV uh, amplitudes. Um, so um, the first step is to uh, carry uh, is to deal with this the eta variables. Uh, so we can remember that all the eta dependence comes with this uh, super momentum conservation delta function, um, and uh, it's uh, we can uh, so yeah I I write down these uh, delta function for the uh, left sub amplitude explicitly. So here we can decompose this uh, Cairo and Cairo spinners onto a basis uh, uh, lambda one and uh, lambda p hat. Um, so by doing so, we can factorize these delta functions on the product of four dimensional delta functions, uh, which allow us to carry out this uh, e the integration over the uh, these eta, uh, eta variables very easily. Um, so then the, doing this integral produces a uh, eight dimensional momentum conservation delta function for the full amplitude. Uh, and you are left with another four dimensional delta function, um, which is Grassmann odd. Um, and uh, you, uh, for the other, uh, the kinematic, dependence, you can just write it down by substituting this formula uh, into, into the right hand side here. So it just looks in the following, uh, takes a very simple form like this. So the next step I would like to, um, to express all these uh, P hat spinners in terms of uh, these uh, lambda uh, external uh, spinners um, lambda one and so lambda n, as well as the dual conformal co coordinates, which which I introduced yesterday, um, is given here. So the Sorry, way Kai, I can yeah. ask you a question. Um, sure. Could you repeat a bit, like how you manipulated the the delta function? Um, that I got a little bit lost in the uh, the previous slide. So here, uh, yeah. Uh, like okay. uh, we had the, the piece A and B, and we want to. Uh, yes. So the uh, I just wrote down a, a one piece of delta function that comes from 
this um, left uh, left amplitude, uh, no, left sub amplitude. Okay. So it's just yeah because this amplitude is uh, depends on um, p one through p i at p i minus one and sorry I should write it down. All right, so there are i terms in this sum. Okay. Um, yes. So this is the original form. So now I want to uh, decompose all the chiral spinners in this formula onto a basis uh, like lambda one and lambda p hat. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. After doing so, uh, it, all these terms are uh, given by. Uh, lambda one times certain uh, Grassmann all uh, uh, Grassmann all the uh, uh, functions plus lambda p hat times another function. So then this uh, delta function factorize onto uh, two copies of delta functions uh, because mm -hmm. basically this term needs to, the, both these terms need to vanish. Okay. Yeah, because these two uh, spinners are independent, they're mm -hmm. to vanish, um, and they're void factorized. Uh, why there is a like a degree four because the e that carries the su four uh, indices a b c d, mm -hmm. so it's just a product for each of these uh, in eta variables. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Perfect. And, and so then one will become part of the... Um, so then when you integrate the integration. theta, mm -hmm. you kill this delta functions. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other piece of uh, the, uh, the momentum conservation from the delta function containing the other piece will be turned into a conservation, momentum conservation for the full amplitude, depending mm -hmm. only on the external uh, kinematics. Yeah. Not on the P's. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thanks for the question. So we're uh, so we arrive at this in the intermediate state. state. Uh, then I I will do some tricks uh, to um, uh, to replace these spinners, which uh, whose expression is not so explicitly given. By the uh, by, these uh, chiral spinners of external uh, legs as well as dual coordinates. So the way we do this is the following: uh, you can see that the spinner p hat appears uh, uh, four times on numerator and four times on denominator. Therefore, you can just rescale it by a factor like uh, here. Uh, so then you. So this complicated structure will mm, be turned into a spinner um, like this. Uh, you can check whether this is true um, by doing some simple, simple uh, algebra. Uh, so therefore I, I succeeded in trading this P hat spinner with um, this new spinner. Um, let's call it Kasai P hat. Um, and then this shifted spinner uh, one, uh, one hat uh, is also not given explicitly, but we can write it down here um, because it's defined by one minus Z P hat uh, times N hat. Um, we can, uh, so we can rearrange these terms to replace it also with a, um, a, a strings of, uh, of sigma matrices uh, projected onto the external uh, chiral spinners. Um, so after this replacement, uh, we can uh, rewrite this complex, complicated structure in the following form, where you have four terms on the denominator. Each term is given by a string of um, sigma matrices contracted with a pair of spinners. Um, for the external legs. And here you get a, 
uh, a delta, uh, a four dimensional Grassmann law delta, delta function, which is exactly this terms, this term, but I rewrite it in different way like this, um, because here I also replace this p hat spinner with this size, um, these new spinners. And also I define the theta variables uh, as a, uh, uh, very similar in the way I define the dual co coordinate xij, but here the theta ij is the sum of the neighboring um, the super momentum of the external x. Um, okay, so we arrived at this, uh, this final formula for the b term, um, which uh, is the sum uh, over the so-called r invariant. And the sum is uh, goes from i equals four to n minus one. Um, in the special case where n equals five, the b terms is uh, only uh, gives the final answer um, for the nmhv amplitude. Um, so there is only one term, uh, and there is only one term in the sum, called, namely r five to four, um, because the amplitude has cyclic symmetry. Uh, we conclude that this R invariant also should have cyclic symmetry. Um, okay, so, so much for the B terms. So when this N is greater than five, starting at N equals six, we also need to deal with the homogeneous term, uh, namely the A terms here. Um, so this is given um, by a product of an elementary bar amplitude, times n minus one point n mhv amplitude. Um, so the way we derive the A term is the following. We first assume that uh, we know the n minus one point n mhv bar amplitude, uh, n mhv amplitude, which is just, just given by the sum over the R invariant. And then we insert this formula into these equations. Uh, and we, uh, so, so here, um, the, uh, the external uh, legs for the NMHV, uh, N minus one point amplitude uh, just correspond to the P hat and three, P, P3 um, to P, through Pn. So uh, by performing the sum over these uh, S and T um, in this equation, uh, we conclude that the A terms um, is given by this formula. Uh, which looks very similar to the uh, to the B terms, but you just need to perform a more uh, sum over over the S and T uh, indices. So putting together the A and B terms, uh, we find the final expression for the NMHV amplitude, uh, N point NMHV amplitude, which is given by a sum over the R invariant, where the sum uh, goes from uh, S equals two. To, to n minus one and the s um, and t must be separated by at least two, otherwise one of these um, R environment will blow up. Um, so that's the conclusion that we find the expression for the nm 3 bar uh, amplitude by solving the BCFW recursion relations. So what nice, uh, the R environment has very nice property. Uh, I mentioned a little bit yesterday that it has manifest dual conformal and in fact, super, uh, dual super conformal symmetry. And you can check the dual conformal symmetry by acting the inversion operator on any of these R invariants and it should still be invariant. Um, and in fact, it has a very nice uh, representation in terms of momentum twister uh, variables. So um, I, I think you have probably already um, know this momentum twisted variables. Um, just uh, I will give a, a, a couple of useful equations here. So for the uh, differences uh, between um, the uh, coordinate, dual coordinates, uh, you can be given uh, written in terms of the uh, um, the uh, the the angle bracket of the uh, four bracket of the uh, momentum twister variables divided by two spinner product. 
Um, and these strings of signal matrices, which is a basic element of the R invariant, can also be given by um, these um, the the four bracket of these twisted variables. And therefore, you can uh, rewrite this R invariant uh, in a way that meets this um, twisted notations. Um, and uh, the four terms um, on the denominators uh, of the R invariants um, just correspond to four of these uh, 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 in a, a, a four bracket of the twisted variables. And the delta four functions um, can be given in, in, in this way, uh, where I define these chi variables as the theta uh, contracted with the uh, lambda uh, in, uh, lambda spinners. So um, this form tells us this R invariant uh, has this uh, R invariance uh, has manifest dual superconformal invariance. Um, and uh, more importantly, uh, the physical singularities, uh, so it, the, all the R invariants contain spurious singularities, um, but the physical singularities correspond to the uh, twister pro and twister um, products where um, where these uh, um, two of the two of the twisters uh, indices are adjacent to each other, meaning that they must come from the uh, the uh, distance in the dual coordinate space. So these also uh, are also associated with the. Uh, uh, the invariant mass of the invariant uh, neighboring particles um, for the for the scattering amplitude, um, but all the other uh, kind of in, the twisted products are not uh, do, do not correspond to physical singularities, and they're spurious singularities, and they always uh, should always cancel uh, in the sum uh, in in the final answer for the amplitude. Um, so let's see how the cancellation happens uh, by studying a specific example, uh, which is the split helicity gluon NMHV amplitude. So we can compute this uh, pure gluon amplitude uh, by extracting a certain component from the uh, super NMHV endpoint amplitude. Uh, the way we do it is the following. We know that the NMHV super amplitude uh, has the power uh, eta to tau um, power, and uh, one of these components uh, takes the following form, where this eta to the fourth uh, is equal to the fully contracted version um, of all the eta variables. So um, this component, uh, the component correspond to the uh, um, pure gluon scattering amplitude An, uh, where we have uh, three ne negative helicity gluons uh, and uh, uh, at position n minus two and minus one and n, and all the other gluons has positive helicity. Um, so how do I how do we extract this component? Well, we can just perform the four dimensional integration over all the eta variables. As I just said, performing an integral uh, with respect to the eta variables is equivalent to taking the derivative. So after performing this in integration, we can extract this component uh, amplitude. Uh, so this is an, also a homework for, for you today to practice carrying out these integrals and uh, extract the NMHV um, split helicity amplitude. And specializing to a six point case, this should agree with the NMHV six point amplitude, which uh, hopefully you have already uh, computed yesterday. So here today, I will just give you this final answer. You can check uh, whether you got the final right answer or not. So it's given by this uh, following form. It's the sum over uh, n minus uh, four terms um, for the six gluon case, and you have only the sum over two terms. And each of these terms is given by these in uh, this uh, has these structures. Um, so uh, we can mm, well. Uh, 
uh, so, so here in this formula, you have this xij uh, squared, which uh, should correspond to physical singularities. And these two terms uh, contain spurious singularities. And uh, how do we see that? Is that we can convert these two terms uh, back into these, uh, these strings of, um, uh, of sigma, two sigma matrices contracted with these spinners. Uh, basically, we con uh, we uh, like convert it back into the original variables that appears in the R invariance, um, and then we can convert it into the, these twister notations. Um, here, you can see um, these uh, these twister products, the indices in this twisted product, are not uh, adjacent with each other, unless S is equal to uh, n minus three uh, for these terms, and uh, or s equals uh, two for these terms. So these correspond to to the two boundary terms in the sum. Uh, except for these two boundary terms, uh, these two uh, two variables contains only spurious singularities, but no physical singularities, and they should all cancel. Uh, let's see uh, why they cancel. So, um, if you can, uh, each of these spurious uh, poles appears in the two adjacent terms uh, in the in the sum over S. So we can combine any arbitrary two adjacent terms together, and extract the poles uh, uh, associated with uh, this variable. Um, and the bracket is the residues at this at the pole, and which are given um, purely by the uh, uh, pro uh, the twister products. Um, and then you can use the Schulten identity to, for the twister variables to prove that the term in the bracket vanishes. Uh, basically, the, each term factorizes into three terms, uh, and you can see that the sum of each of these uh, three pairs vanishes as the uh, this this um, this singular singular thing, singular uh, terms vanishes, and therefore the residue at this the pole is zero, and uh, that means this uh, singularity at this location uh, is spurious. Um, therefore, in conclusion, that we can say that in the NMHV uh, partial uh, gluon amplitudes, all the physical singularity that can appear is the following of S, uh, XSN squared um, and S, uh, XSN minus one squared come from the original uh, expression uh, here where S goes from two to N minus three. But there are two additional terms that come from the these two terms uh, when the sums uh, goes uh, goes from uh, S equals two or S equals N minus three. Namely, they are the two boundary terms. So here are the, all the physical similarities that we can have uh, in the amplitude. So this information uh, would help us a lot in uh, uh, constructing, uh, in, in, um, in writing down answers for the square the amplitude for the differential cross sections. Uh, because we need that allows us to avoid uh, introducing a lot of spurious singularities as well as the uh, the uh, Mendelssohn invariants that are, that do not do not appear in the amplitude. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much all for today. Um, do you have any questions? Sorry. Hi, Kai. Hi. Uh, um, I have a question on the, on the exercise. Um, could could yeah. you repeat like uh, the, the 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 exercise on the spurious pole that we have to do? What's the exactly what we have to do? Um. There, there is, mm. uh, 
the you mean why this the school is called cancel like why is this i didn't understood if it's part of the exercise that we do, we have to redo also the calculation and check that the if I understood correctly, we have to check that the six point and MHV amplitude is free of uh, spurious pole, like you have to go through this, or, or it's uh, not oh, part yeah, of it. It was not uh, supposed to be done yesterday, but to, today, uh, after today's lecture, uh, hopefully you can like see that the spurious poles cancel. Okay, uh, okay. It's just uh, yeah, yeah. We just now, now we see it. Uh, we yeah, see it just, clearly. Yeah, clearly, because it's not easy to see uh, if you don't put these these kind of structures into the uh, twister notations. Mm -hmm. um, although you know that physically this should not correspond to any uh, physical like collinear or soft singularities, but it's not easy to see um, mm -hmm. here. The, if you put this into twisted notation, I can use shortened identity to see that indeed they cancel. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And so tomorrow we will continue um, with the application, phenomenological applications, and uh, we, will, uh, uh, we, we will study the component amplitude, um, basically extracting QCD amplitude from the super uh, amplitude in equals four, and which allow us to compute some, some uh, physical observables, which are relevant for phenomenological studies. Um, yeah, so today's homework is just to, uh, uh, one is to uh, compute the six gluon NMHV amplitude uh, by extracting these component amplitudes from the super amplitude. Um, and compare with, with what you got yesterday. Andrea, are you are you online? If you, if you want to go on, guys. Uh, yeah. So let's uh, let's thank Kai for a nice uh, nice second lecture. Uh,